Alright, don't mind me guys, I just have a couple of notes for me because I do tend to get off. Oh sorry. <laughs> I do tend to get off the rails a little bit and start talking, so but anyways, um I just want to start off by saying thank you so much, you know, for inviting me to this event. Um it's truly an honour. And I remember telling my friends um that I was gonna speak for fifteen minutes in this script and they were absolutely horrified. They were like, how can you do that? And I just remember saying to them, you know, I'm Somali, you guys. Actually, I'm a Somali girl. Talking for 15 minutes, that's not a problem. <laughs> for 15 minutes. You be quiet for 15 minutes. Now, that would have been a challenge. <laughs> but, um, so I'm just going to start off by saying, my name's Farmer Mohammed, and yes, I do have a vagina, guys. <laughs> that's what I'm going to be talking about today. <laughs> <laughs> now, so our work um, are defending the interrogate. Oh, I can't even speak today. So our work of defending the vagina actually started uh, seven years ago with uh, Lisa Zimmerman, who's the co-founder of Integrate Bristol. Um, and it all started when um, she was teaching at a school, and um, she wanted to take this group of twelve young girls on a trip. You know, because they've worked hard as a reward for them. And she was taken aside by the, the vice principal, and she was told that out of the 12 girls, 11 of them have disclosed that they had you know, female genital mutilation done. And that's kind of where it all started, and that's when she decided, you know, we have to do something about it. So it started off with literally just four girls writing about poetry. Now you would think, you know, poetry project, that might not sound like much, and it might not sound like you know, they're doing anything, but for these young girls, it was absolutely terrifying for them. They literally wouldn't even let anyone read what they wrote. As soon as someone walked past them, they'd literally turn the um, screens off because they were so scared about what other people would think about them. That was how taboo the subject was. Um, yeah, we, it's so taboo, even people within the community will talk about it. You know, I come from a Somali community and I had no idea that this was a thing, that this was even going on, let alone in Africa, I didn't even know it was going on in Bristol, which is still a problem today. But then, you know, in 2010, more girls started joining us, you know, they started getting more self-confidence, and you know how girls gossip, guys, you know? <laughs> Somali gossip is 10 times worse. It's, it's faster than any modern technology. <laughs> slowly, more girls started joining. And that's when we made our drama documentary for why. And it, just, it was just to answer some of the questions that we had, you know, what is FGM? Why is this happening? Um, what effect does it have on the body? And so on. And that was actually when we had our first backlash. Um, I remember our vice, our actual principal getting a call saying 75 angry elders were on their way to um, basically say everything that we were doing was wrong and that we should have asked for their permission and that we need to stop what we're doing right now. Um, which is kind of crazy to think because, you know, these are young, you know, 13 young girls who are finally getting confidence. And, uh, and also challenge that, no, this is our bodies, we can talk about whatever we want to do, we can do whatever we want to say, and that we don't have to go up to, you know, these, none of these men weren't even related to any of the girls who were in the project, you know, they weren't the mothers, they weren't rela related whatsoever, but because they think they're these, they appointed themselves as these, you know, self-elders, that they thought they had any say in what we were doing. Um, and I remember Lisa thinking, well, this is great, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have some press, this is amazing for the campaign. <laughs> um, and, you know, with a click like that, they just completely disappeared, so cowards, obviously. Um, and, um, you know, I would say they had no balls, but, you know, I really want to focus on that guy. I'm sick with that. Um, but yeah, and that's when we actually received. Um, that's when uh, we actually received one of our first awards, and it was actually featured on Women's Hour, which is amazing for us. And that's when you know stuff really started to kick in for us. Um, but I'm just going to rewind for a little bit for those people who you know don't know what FGM is or what it stands for, or what it actually is. 
Um, FTM is any <coughs> type of female genital mutilation is any, you know, a part or any part, any surgical, oh my god, <laughs> surgical procedure done to the uh, external genitalia for, you know, no medical reasons. So there's, th there's different types. Type 1 is where you, you, know, you cut off the clitoris. Type 2 is where it's not only the clitoris, but it's also the inner and outer labia. Type 3 is the cutting or scraping of the clitoris, the inner, in, the inner labia and the outer labia, but also uh, stitching it up. They, they only leave the size of a matchstick. That's how small the hole is. And that's supposed to be for you. That's supposed to be for urination and menstruation as well. So you can understand how painful that is. Now type four is anything that doesn't really fit into type one, type two, or type three. So it's all of that plus extra, including labia, labiaplasty. So the specialty of Harley Street. FGM is actually defined as any circus. Sur oh, surgical procedure to the external genitalia of the female body. So labioplasty, the nip talk of the Western society, mm. is included in that. You know, at the end of the day, the reasons behind that practice is the same as type one and type two. They come from the belief, the pressure to believe that the the woman and the girls need to look in a certain way. They need to conform, and that you know, the bodies aren't fine the way they are. Now, our next project, that was more ambitious, you know, we didn't want to hide this one, we decided, you know, we want to scream our name for the rooftops and let people know, yes, we are here, and we want, you know, we, want, we wanted people to notice us. So, that's when we decided to do um, a little film, which is on YouTube, but called Silent Scream, and the guys literally came out of nowhere. That's, one guy actually accused one of the girls who's in the film of um, starring in a pornography film that all of these young girls all of us we were starring in a pornography film and um you know trying to come up to our parents and say you know your daughter um some doing some really bad things you know she's revealing herself and uh, a lot of them would come up to lisa and say you know lisa was forcing us to be this it's kind of like like slavery like she was forcing us to do all this work for her and that none of us wanted to actually be here and stuff um, and it's, it was actually um, a woman who was the ringleader of all of this, a woman that actually worked um, at our school. She didn't like what we were doing. She you know, tried to come up with a list of accusations of things like, you know, the police um, you know, didn't like that we were doing, the we hadn't performed the police of what we were doing, which is kind of ironic because they actually starred in the movie and they were the ones who gave us our award. Um, yeah, she just had a long list of accusations and um, she would she tried to do whatever she could to try and stop our screening. And because of this, the mothers um, held a secret meeting in one of the houses with the police to try and, you know, make sure that the screening does go ahead. And that's how much, you know, that they loved us and supported us. And, um, it, you know, it was, it was truly them, but if not for them, that screen would have never happened and we probably wouldn't be where we are today. So, um, yeah, it goes to show um, that our parents do, um, you know, they are proud of us and they, they do give us a say of what um, they realise that was going on. And even though I do come up, do come from that community that practices it, not everyone has that. Belief. And it's just, they just need that someone to give, to give a voice to them. To, to you know, let people know that no, I don't agree with this practice, and I want people to know that. <coughs> and um, but yeah, um, sorry guys. <laughs> but yeah, so the trailer for Silent Scream it had a uh, three hundred fifty-two thousand hits on YouTube. We won you know many awards from it, such as the Chief Constable Special Accommodation. And in 2012, we actually won the Young Voices Award at the British Film Institute in London, which is, well, that was so amazing for us all, especially just going up there, you know, me and Alicia Dixon and all this. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, we finally made it, yes! <laughs> but, yeah. And then, from then, it just went up. We, in, in 2012, we, 
it ended up being 85 of us and we kind of sat down and thought, you know, what can we do next? And that's when we decided to hold a three-stranded um, conference at Bristol University about FGM, you know. So the law professionals, you know, people who are teachers and midwives in the medical profession, um, you know, the youth and everyone to talk and really have a discussion about FGM and how to try and stop it. Um, and it was two weeks after that, um, a couple of the people from Integrate Bristol were invited to go to London and to be in two, two, two news night programmes, um, which um, I'll never forget because one of the girls, Nuna Hassan, um, on live TV actually said, you know, told David Cameron to grow a pair of balls and uh, <laughs> actually do something about it because he's not doing anything. Um, which is pretty amazing because a year later he actually dedicated uh, 32 million pounds to FGM work and you know all across Africa and other countries so because of that now Nigeria and Somalia have banned FGM so which is absolutely amazing. Yeah. But yeah over the years you know we've started so many amazing projects and we've met so many amazing people and get to hear their voices and everything and we've just accomplished so much it's kind of crazy to think you know how did we get from four girls to where we are right now um, we also, you know, successfully um, campaigned for the policy change. We introduced the ICD, which stands for International Code of Disease. So now we finally actually have stats for FGM, and we now know exactly how many girls are estimated to go through this, and finally actually do something about it. Because, you know, at the end of the day, without stats, we could we could say whatever we want. You know, FGM is happening and stuff, but without the stats, we can't really prove that it is going on in the UK. But we finally have that now. And in March 2015, so not that long ago, nearly 600 girls <laughs> under the age of 18 sought medical help for FGM. And that's 600 girls in just one month. And those are just the girls who actually came forward and said something about it. So imagine how many girls there are out there that, you know, who are going through this, but, you know, have no one to talk to. You know, there's, um, it's estimated that 125 million girls globally have been affected by FGM. And people say FGM is not a thing. I don't understand that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then, you know, just last year, what I'm probably most famous for, I did a petition to Michael Gove, the former, thankfully, <laughs> second <laughs> president. <laughs> I got that right. Um, but yeah, <laughs> so I'm sure you're all aware of the petition. You know, The Guardian, they asked me to be the face other petition and you know what I probably have like the most famous headscarf. I kind of quite wear the headscarf now, now that I think back on it. But um, yeah, um, it kind of happened at the right place, right time, really, because we did a we were in the middle of writing a music, um, you know, writing a song and creating a music video. You know, just having a little dig at Michael Gove and. In the music video, we actually tell Michael Gove to go, and he's gone now, which is <laughs> much to the delight to all the teachers and students, right? But yeah, yeah. But yeah, I um, so I went with Lisa and some of the other girls from the charity, and I just, I will never forget that day. It was probably the most fun I've had um, ever, probably. You know, he was, we were actually really calm the whole way um, we got up there, and uh, you know. We, we weren't really nervous at all. I'm actually more nervous for this than I was, you know, going to, t you know, say what I want to say to Michael Go. But God, if only you guys had seen his face. He was so uncomfortable. He was so nervous. You know, so red faced, like wriggling around in the seat. You know, one of the girls was actually tasked to um, um, try to make him, you know, as uncomfortable as possible. <laughs> Start throwing words like clitoris, vagina. <laughs> uh, just because we could. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty crazy time in my life. You know. <laughs> but yeah, that was just an amazing time in my life. You know, I got to meet Ban Ki Moon, uh, which was absolutely amazing. Just having his support and knowing that he was there for me and whatever he wanted to do, that he would help. You know, I got to meet Malala who's, you know, one of my idols and one of my role models and um, just knowing that there was all these people out there who actually, you know, 
give their support and you know if it wasn't for these people the petition wouldn't have got where it is and I wouldn't be standing here today talking about this um, but yeah so in the end we got the letter to the schools but you know we didn't feel it was strong enough so we're, at, we're still campaigning for statutory education you know it's common sense at the end of the day all teachers all medical and frontline staff need to be trained about FGM and it needs to be treated like any other gender-based violence or abuse you know, the thing is, if we want to challenge violence against women and girls or FGM, you know, change attitudes, change society, and do something that will really make a difference, then we need to start in school. Education is where it all starts. But those in the education policies, they don't get that. At the end of the day, breaking cycles is what it's all about. Breaking cycles of control, of suppression, of abuse, and of sexism. And it's not just FGM. Um, it's actually, you know, any other abuse that happens that isn't talked about enough. People, it needs to be recognised and people need to come up and say, yes, this is abuse. At the end of the day, for example, child FGMA is child abuse and it needs to be recon recognised as child abuse or nothing is going to happen. Um, But um, yeah, so uh, and that's exactly what the young people of Integrate Bristol are trying to do. We've actually managed to, because of the peer education and you know we go to other schools and events to talk about these kind of things, we've managed to reach almost 5,000 people and that's directly, um, not even including on social media and you know the petition and all of that. And in February of this year actually, we finally got to train teachers in my old school. It's absolutely amazing because you know, back then no one would even talk about it and it was just, yeah, it was just, um, <laughs> sorry guys, but yeah, it was just amazing to see that, you know, where we've come from and, you know, where we are right now. To start off with just four girls and now, you know, we've got to meet all these, you know, celebrities, we've got to, um, you know, finally have our voices heard. That's the most um, special part, but I just want to end up by saying, you know, FGM doesn't happen because you're a Muslim or because you're African or because you come from an educated and or um, you know unprivileged society. It happens at the end of the day because of your girl, because you're a girl. That's it, really, um, because of gender inequality and the desire to suppress and control women. You know, gender inequality and gender-based violence is not limited to one race or religion or culture. It's absolutely universal. So I think I'm just going to show you a little clip of our latest music video, Use Your Head. Um, I'm just going to let the music video do all the talking for you, but I hope you enjoy. Girls objectify themselves, treating like possessed. 
Issues like products on the shelf But we ain't got to conform to no gender norms We're moving forward now, we ain't frightened anymore Tell me what kind of person wants to be confined Cause I don't wanna be no stereotype I gotta revolutionize, get with the times And I'm her paying for his freaking crimes I'm saying my life is mine to define I Just cause we're young don't mean that when the fools want gender violence Education in every school When the next generation break away from submission It's time for equality so make it our mission To stop girl mutilating, grooming and violating This is our future and yes we're living in it Join our revolution and see the bigger 